And welcome back to Jeff Kuenange live here at Citizen Television. Dr. PLO Lumumba, Barack Maluka in the house. And by the way, if you're listening or you're watching in the last um, last segment, Barack Maluka mentioned uh, someone in the 10th century. He called him Ethelred the Unready. The Redless, yes. And I went to Google, and Google works. Google is your friend. He says, Ethelred is known as the Unready, was the king of Eng England, of the English, from nine, 978, 978 to 1013. His epithet does not derive from the modern word unready, but rather from the old Eng English unread meaning, poorly advised. Yes, and my president is poorly advised. Otherwise, he would have taken certain decisions. Yeah. So when I see him, I see him in the image of Ethelred the Unread. Dr. Piello, real quick, why is the president so reluctant to call it as it is? He has the machinery, he's got the backing, the DPP, the DCI, the e revived ESCC. They're all waiting and willing to back him when he says something. What is stopping him? Let us look at what is happening in context. I think you are talking about uh, corruption, yes. and what is happening. There is a sense in which there are those who want drama. And drama means that we must spill blood. But we must also remember that there is due process. Mm -hmm. And where there is due process, the wheels of justice grind slowly. And there is a sense in which whether one likes it or not, one sees some element of political goodwill. In other words, we have a president who on a daily basis, perhaps many times too often, yeah. is talking about and against <laughs> corruption. <laughs> but what he is doing, which I think uh, irritates my friend uh, Barack Muluka, yes. is allowing criminality to be the be all and all, mm -hmm. while Barack, would want something more. He would want political morality yeah. to be given precedence so that conviction in and of itself should not be the reason why you jettison some in your political system or arrangement. But there is a sense in which a number of things are happening. I see the DCI doing certain things. Mm -hmm. I see the DPP doing certain things. I see the ESCC doing certain things. I see the courts doing certain things. Not as fast as one would love those things to be done, but those things are being done. If you look at the gestation period of trials involving corruption, because these are white collar, sophisticated crimes, which masquerade as legitimate contracts, it doesn't take a short time. This is the experience, forget the drama. And therefore, to that extent, I would want to say that certain things are happening. The other thing that I find a little unfortunate is for an individual to be facing a criminal charge. This individual is a governor, and he goes back to his county and continues to discharge the functions of the office of a governor. Yeah. That is completely unacceptable. That's a These individuals yeah. ought to leave office during the whole period that they are facing these accusations yeah. until they prove themselves, until they are proven innocent by a court of law. That is what I find unfortunate. But I know, as I conclude, that there are others who would want drama. But if you want drama, then let us forget about the court process. Mm. Let us just say Jeff Koinange is a thief. We take you to Huru Park and we say, how many, as many as want him executed? And if you have a louder voice, we execute you. But that is barbaric. The wheels of justice are slow. Barack, the, 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 Barack. The, 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 these ones are not just slow, they are stuck. Mm. They are stuck and they are rolling in the same place. You know, if you come to Emanudia, you will find some roads there. 
of course, uh, that Paranya is trying to do something about them. Yes. But uh, majority of them, you'll still find their muddy roads. And when you get there with uh, your car you're from town, it gets uh, stuck in the mud and the wheel is spinning in the same place. Yeah. And PLO looks at that wheel spinning in the same place and the car is producing, the engine is producing uh, some screeching sound. And you, and you say something is happening about it. And the president is talking about it. I've just said a few moments ago that uh, my president has become a whistleblower where we expect him to act. My brother PLO remembers that uh, when Leopold Sengo was in the habit of talking about negritude, everyday negritude, we are Negroes, negritude, negritude. Wole Shoinka told him that a tiger does not proclaim its tigritude. It pounces. Mm -hmm. And when it has pounced, everybody looks and says, behold, a tiger. Now the tiger that is President Uhuru Kenyatta must pounce. It's not good enough for President Uhuru Kenyatta to stand in Jamhuri Park and talk about uh, corruption, whistleblow, and at the end of uh, his uh, very irate and child speech, point a finger at uh, his appointee in the cabinet and tell him, we, Utaniona. When? I've been waiting for this man to, 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 to see him. I don't know whether he meant he was inviting him to State House to see him or whether he meant that he was going to take action. And I have seen him address the same cabinet uh, secretary and tell him, we, Utaniona, there are people who are his appointees direct appointees and whom he can exercise the power of uh, firing the same way he exercised uh, the power of hiring. Let us start there. Yes, we agree that uh, the, the, the justice must not only be done, but it must be seen to be done through the court processes. But if I'm the CEO, the National Chief Executive Officer, I will tell you, PLO, you are my friend. I appointed you into this office because not just of our friendship, but also because of uh, what I saw as your competence. But you have let us down. You have let me down. You are the enemy of the Republic of Kenya, and I need you to resign. And if you do not resign by such and such a time, I will personally exercise my powers and separate you. Before we even talk about the governor about and over whom the president does not exercise any power, there are these people whom he exercises power over. Now, if a cabinet secretary is under investigation and he is sitting pretty in that office, how anywhere in the world do you expect that he's not going to frustrate the process. No wonder the deputy president can sit in these studios and look in these cameras and tell Kenyans that corruption doesn't matter, that it has got no role to play towards your becoming a leader, including towards becoming the president of this country. Yeah. He said that last night yeah. and uh, on your own tapes, I believe, is recorded. You can go back yeah. to you are, you, are, you are recent history, mm. and you will see it. Here is a deputy president who can look at us, mark in the face, and tell us that corruption doesn't matter. Never mind that we have got chapter six. But, but, but Barack, I know mind. you are still making Never the mind. point. Never mind. Okay. But you are making the point, but it doesn't matter. Kenyans have demonstrated time and time again that if one is alleged to be involved in corruption, that person becomes attractive to the electorate. Mm. That person becomes attractive to the churches. Yeah. The mosques have been exempt in this. But you and me have seen individuals who cannot account for their wealth are elected into public office. You and me have talked about something that we call political hygiene. So there is a sense in which the country accepts corruption as a way of life. What we are saying is that the President of the Republic of Kenya is in a unique position to provide the necessary leadership. And what we are saying is that there are two ways of dealing with corruption. Mm -hmm. There is the criminal path, 
via which they will be taken through the judicial process and if found guilty, they will be convicted and their ill-gotten wealth will be taken. Then there is the moral path, which we talk about national values. This is the moral path that behooves the particular individual who is mentioned, who will say that during the whole period that I'm under investigation, I'll step aside. But in Kenya, that does not happen because a thief is our thief immunized by our ethnic mm. immunization yes. process. Case in point, look how long it took to fire former sports minister or CS, Echessa. Look how long it took. If, if he, oh. president can fire Echessa, he can fire anyone, anyone else, else yeah. in his cabinet. Yeah. What is stopping him from firing them? It's either that uh, all this stuff we are seeing is drama. In fact, I think uh, what the president needs to do, or the presidency for that matter, in this uh, so-called war against corruption is to tell us uh, Kenyan citizens, Mabibi na Mabwana, the presidency presents to you a play called the war against corruption, Karibuni and then they can start playing their various roles. The president comes and uh, blows the whistle. The deputy president says, no, it is about me. Uh, some cabinet uh, secretaries from uh, the president's uh, backyard uh, uh, go quiet. The ones from uh, the deputy president's backyard uh, also speak. Where, where in the world would you find a, a cabinet secretary contradicting the president and staying in that uh, government? Where it, yeah. in the world do you find... It blows the mind. It blows my mind. Uh, and, and then at the same time, PLO, there's no more opposition. There's no more opposition in this country. The, the, it's a one-party the, state. The, the, the opposition is there. There is I'll, an I'll, attempt at I'll, opposition. I'll, I'll speak to that. To which he belongs. You, you, you can see, speak to it. When you listen to people in this country, in this country, <coughs> the media and even fellow Kenyans, there's a sense in which we are used to violence as the face of the opposition. Mm. It's not about uh, taking a different stand on issues. I think Kenyans got so used to uh, violent protests that they miss them, that they would like to see us bursting into the streets and uh, lighting up bonfires and uh, stopping life and paralyzing everything. But um, if the grain of history is anything to go by, they perhaps don't have too long to wait. The things that are happening in this country are not sustainable. The levels of uh, theft in this country and those uh, who are associated with them uh, talking to us with impunity are not sustainable. If you are seeing what is happening in Algeria today, where President uh, Bouteflika yeah. is forced yeah. to step down, mm -hmm and that doesn't end the street protests. Yeah. The people of Algeria are saying the whole lot and Kabdul must go. If you are seeing what is happening in Sudan, where Omar Hassan al-Bashir, <coughs> when he was uh, sworn in 30 years ago, holding the Quran in one hand and holding the uh, Russian gun in the other hand, yes. today the people of Sudan are telling him, you have to go. You have to go. Are those and, are signs of the times? And those are signs of the times. Neither the Quran nor the Russian uh, uh, gun, you're the one who knows what it the is. The Kalashnikov, AK-47. Neither of the two are going to save his presidency. And those things are like all bad things that we imagine happen to people elsewhere. Oh, well, the day is coming mm. when they're going to happen here. But, but for the time being, yes. <coughs> listen to the things that we are telling. When we tell the president what you are doing is not right, when we ask questions about the deputy president, when we talk about overborrowing and uh, we talk about uh, uh, lack of accountability of where the borrowed monies have gone, when we talk about the unemployed youth in the country. All these things constitute an alternative view, an opposition. But if you want an opposition where you will see us in the streets, 
Well, the time may not be very far. Uh, we had this discussion about, with you not too long ago. Position. Yes. You know, a number of things must come into play. When you hear uh, the politicians who are formally in the opposition, you can't tell, even one must look for words, because mm -hmm. officially there ought to be an arrangement called NASA, mm -hmm. which is an amalgam of different political parties. That ought to be the official position. Yeah. A segment of it has been captured by the current administration with the consequence that it now blows hot and cold. There are moments when it is in bed with the government. Yeah. There are moments when it is also claiming to be in opposition. When you listen to them, you say, they say that we want a government that is all inclusive. And I ask myself, is the subtext that the current crop of politicians is that we need a one-party state? Because what is all-inclusive government? It means that we want to go to a one-party state. That's right. Because everybody wants a position, either the president yes. or the deputy president or the prime minister or the deputy prime minister yeah. or something like that. Yes. The only individual, and that is why he is speaking with some element of strength, is the ANC which is led by Honorable Musalia Mudavad, is right. the only one that continues to emerge every so often to raise their voice. Is the only one, I want to say, who has not been captured by one or two appointments. So Honorable Dinga, we know, is uh, now completely on the other side. Honorable Kalonzo Musioka was also appointed on, on, on that other side. Yep. Honorable Tangula is on his own right uh, in, in the Senate, although he was <laughs> deprived of the leadership of the Senate, the minority. So there is a sense in which the strong opposition, as we know it, the segment led by Raila, that I think is what we must say. Let's yeah. not mince word. Yeah. Opposition for the last few years has meant that Honorable Odinga is not in government, yeah. in the minds of many Kenyans. And therefore, when he joins government, even when he says he's not in government, in then government. there is no opposition in the minds of Kenyans. Right. And therefore, when you see us moving toward the referendum and it being said that we want an all-inclusive government come the year 2022, we say an all-inclusive government where tribal leaders, this is what we don't say, mm -hmm. where there'll be a coalition of tribes whose leaders will have enough seats to share. Mm -hmm. So don't be surprised when we receive a report that says that Kenya should now have an arrangement in the executive arm of government with a president, yep. a deputy president, a prime minister, a deputy prime minister, another deputy prime minister, so that you can have a coalition of tribes. Yeah. We must ask ourselves whether that is the politics we want to play or we want to wrap our minds around the politics of ideas. Unfortunately, ask, yeah. ideas don't even begin to fly in this country like the elephant before them. Absolutely. And Barak, let me ask you this. Why is it in this country, it's, it's always a use and dump situation? Throughout history, a use and dump. And now maybe that's why Deputy President William Ruto is feeling like he's being cornered. It's because he, he committed to, to, to the coalition in 2013 and again in 2017, and now he's feeling like, you know, these people, they've used me and they're about to dump me. <laughs> well, uh, uh, for a start, I think uh, the union between uh, Deputy President William Ruto and President Uhuru Kenyatta was uh, a union of uh, convenience. If it was a marriage, it was a marriage of uh, convenience. It was not a marriage that uh, flourished or bl blossomed uh, out of uh, love and uh, other uh, romanticisms. Yeah. That, despite uh, the bromance, that, despite that, the t-shirts, all uh, the, the, the red ties all, all, and all that. All, all that is uh, drama and uh, we saw a bit of it again the other day yeah. in uh, Parliament when they once again turned out in a high school uniform, blazers, uh, red ties, yeah. uh, black shoes, uh, yeah. sock, stockings and uh, uh, all that. But uh, everyone who enters a marriage of uh, convenience must uh, always uh, know at the back of their mind that uh, when the circumstances that have brought us together no longer exist, 
other options are going to be exercised. And therefore, you cannot uh, quite say you have been uh, betrayed uh, because uh, people will always uh, shift uh, their options. We know that uh, we live in a country where there are politicians, as I said uh, the other day, who believe that uh, the only partnership they can engage in with uh, other people is partnership of uh, the horse and the horse rider, where they are the riders and everyone else is uh, the horse. Mm. And that includes the partnership between the people in government, the people in politics, and the electorate. The political class in the country, by and large, sees uh, the nation in the imagery of horses, and they see themselves in the imagery of riders, mm. and they own these horses, Jeff Koinange, the way you own your elegant uh, designer's shoes that I've been admiring here <laughs> since uh, I got here this uh, uh, evening, yes. and which I hope I can persuade you to give me. And uh, name your birthday. Uh, yeah, you can you can give the the, the, the shoes uh, to me. Yes. Now that is the manner in which the political class uh -huh. believe that it can exchange Change. their citizens. Yes. That uh, you come with your clerks and he comes uh, with uh, his youths on Loho yes. and uh, you put yes. them together and you beat me because mine are just from Kikomba here. Okay? Yes. So you own people. Literally. We are led by leaders who consider themselves owners of human beings the same way they own their estates. Dr. Biello, we've talked about this time without, the, you, you always talk about that, no. and we always say, will we ever come out of this political morass that we are in? Will the electorate think like they did in Ugenya and, and uh, Mbakasi? Will they think outside the, pol you know, the, the big man politics? and think, you know what, I'm going to elect this person because of who they are. I think, are we ready for that? I think things are going to change. It may not be dramatic, but I, I also hold the view that there is a crop of politicians who have been on the political stage in Kenya for so long, mm. and their style of doing things has permeated the national body politic for so long that as long as they are active participants, they will not want that to happen. But things are beginning to happen. And that is why I'm very happy with what happened in Embakasi. I'm very happy with what happened in Ugenya. And I look forward to that momentum achieving a crescendo of sorts as we run toward the year 2022. The media must also help in this regard. The media in Kenya, particularly the print media, yeah. is fixated with certain individuals. If you look at the newspapers, any of the major newspapers, mm -hmm. out of the 365 days, on 200 days, you can predict what the headline is going to be with the consequence that new ideas do not have the chance of a snowball in hell to survive right. in the political arena in Kenya. Yeah. And when that happens, it means that no new ideas, because politics and democracy is a competition of ideas. Let me give you uh, an example. My good friend Ekuru Aukot mm -hmm. came up with a petition to have a referendum. If you look at the issues that he raises, they are weighty issues, but they're always tucked in page, on page 13 of any one of our major newspapers. The other side of the political divide who are talking about the uh, referendum have raised no issues at all, but they are given acres and acres of pages in the newspapers, but in short shift, answer to your question, there is a crop of Kenyans who will not be looking to this messianic leadership. Mm. Messianic leadership belongs to the last century. People are now beginning to think about ideas. Are you going to create an environment where we can invent and innovate? Are you going to create an environment where we'll have opportunities? Are you going to improve our health? Are you going to improve our education? And I believe that the electorate is beginning to wake up. It may be the year 2022 when the electorate demonstrates dramatically that they are tired with the old God and that they want a new generation. And I look forward to that 
there was a music played in the 1970s it's called Nouvelle Génération. Mm. I look forward to that generation. <laughs> Nouvelle Génération. <laughs> Absolutely. But you know, gentlemen, there's a time we scoffed at a Sonko presidency or a Joho presidency or a Waititu for that matter. It could happen now, gentlemen. It could happen. Who's laughing now? Oh, politics is the art of the possible. Well, <laughs> a, 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 a nation that uh, elects some of the kinds of people that we have in leadership positions yeah. is a nation that must be pitied. You know, you are not talking about people who have arrived in those positions like Samuel Doe shooting. Mm. They have not arrived with guns yeah. and other military artillery like Idi Amin and imposing themselves upon the people. We are talking about fellows who have come and oh, uh, sold themselves to you, uh, told you that you should vote for them, and they have given you handouts and you have voted for them. And in certain places, you had better choices which you ignored. Mm. And you chose to live with these people. Mm. And I have a absolutely no apology in addressing the people of Kiambu and telling them that some of the worst examples in this country are from Kiambu. Mm. Whether you are talking about members of parliament, you are talking about uh, the, the, the county government, you are talking about the county assembly, it represents some of the worst that you could ever find anywhere in the world. And I think that it is time that people started waking up. This is a county that has got the best potential in the whole country being proximate to the capital city. Mm. But then why should we even talk about Kiambu when we have got Nairobi here, <laughs> where all of us live, and a city that we see steadily degenerating into an ever-expanding slum, informed with the sewage, vast sewers all over, flowing, water mixing with the sewage, dead dogs and cats all over the place, cats and rats cutting through alleys and back streets in the so-called city center. And we have got a governor whom we elected, whether I voted for him or not, is immaterial because the majority of us voted for that mm -hmm. governor. And the scenario replicates itself across 47, well, say about 40 counties, mm. give an exception of about uh, yeah. uh, four or five uh, counties like uh, Makweni, Makweni, where yeah. they, they're doing very mm. good work and yeah. uh, Governor Kibwana really, you can't light a candle to, to, to him. It is the citizenry. We must ask ourselves questions so that when eventually these people start meeting in the boardrooms, and they start saying, you will be president, mm. and you will be deputy president, mm. first deputy president, second deputy president. We must also ask ourselves the question, what, what is, is wrong the quality of the electorate? Yeah. Yeah. And this electorate is going to accept this thing. Imagine, as I finish, we are one country where an individual can stand up and tell us that this year there's going to be a referendum. In this referendum, people will vote this way. And we will change this country this way. Where is he getting the authority to tell us that? It's because he knows we are sheeple. sheeple. Well, the sheeple. result is known before the vote is cast. And yeah. somebody put it figuratively that the problem of Africa and Kenya is that the electorate does not listen to the song they listen to the singer. Hmm. So no matter how good a singer you are, yes. if you are not the person that they want, if you are not their tribal leader, yes. you can sing all you want. And all day long. And all day long. Yeah. 
they'd not be impressed. That is where we must liberate ourselves. And let me say this, even those whom you think ought to be free of this vice, those who have exposure and gone to school, when it comes to matters politics in Kenya, in many cases there is no difference to the, between those who have gone to school and those who have gone to school. The language is one and the same. the same. It is our tribe and that is what animates and motivates us. And PLO, when you see, when the people see the leaders getting away with all kinds of things, right? Whether it's stealing, corruption, whatever, getting away with it, they too feel they can get away with it. And in this instance, I'm talking about the amount of murders and crimes committed on people, especially women. They're being killed left, right, and center. You, you open a paper today, this woman has been hacked to death. This woman has been slashed to death. This woman was killed in her apartment, dumped in a car, and dumped in a lake. Isn't this a reflection of us? Impunity. Impunity has taken root. And people can do things with abject abandon with no fear of consequence. And that is what he was warning about, yeah. that we may sit pretty thinking that we are immune from all manner of pogroms that we have seen in other countries. Mm -hmm. But you can begin to see that they are the signs, the early signs of possible pogroms. And these pogroms will be informed by this culture of impunity. Mm -hmm. These will be informed by this contempt for the electorate. This will be informed by this assumption by the politician that the voters are without sense and without direction. This will be informed by the assumption on the part of leaders that they are messiahs, that they have the monopoly of wisdom and knowledge. And history has taught us one thing. Mm -hmm that those who arrogate to themselves the monopoly of wisdom and knowledge often lead their countries through shortcuts to chaos. We can prevent that by waking up. And we can also look at um, our weather forecast and say the rains have been delayed. Are we, have we angered the gods, Barak? Have we angered? I mean, what's going on? <laughs> I mean, uh, everything is... <laughs> is <laughs> <laughs> he yeah, yeah, comes yeah. from the home of the rainmakers. Tell us whether the gods are hungry. <laughs> of, course, of course we make. Of course we make rain. Emanulia. What, what are they saying, Emanulia? Of course we we make rain. Uh, ask uh, President Kenyatta in 1970. He had to bring the rainmakers of uh, of Ebunyode to Nairobi, and uh, they made rain. Yes. So we are rainmakers, but uh, on a more serious note. Yes. You look at what we've been doing to the environment. Mm. You look at what we've been doing to the natural forests. You look at what we've been doing to the streams. And when you talk about these things, they are politicized. Yeah. You find uh, someone saying that uh, it is about us, yeah? it, 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 that we are under assault. Yeah. So we are steadily destroying the environment. In that, of course, we are not alone in the world. We know about the great environmental uh, debate that has been going on. We know about the Paris Agreement of a couple of years back yeah. and uh, the position that has been taken by some of the more powerful uh, nations of the world and their governments. And uh, we know about the climate change that uh, we are suffering. And nobody talks about the environment anymore in this country. And in this country, Kenya, if you are appointed to the environment portfolio, it is seen as a, a demotion. Mm -hmm. If you have been working as a minister for, say, education or foreign affairs, and they decide that you're now going to be in charge of the environment, even the press, the one that PLO was talking about, they will write screaming headlines the following morning to the effect that you have been demoted. Mm. And yet what could be more important than the environment yeah. Yeah. The very livelihood, our waters, our trees, uh, our air that we breathe every day and which we take for granted. If you are denied that air for just about three, four minutes, You're you gone. are kaput. You're, gone. Mm. You're no, no longer there. What could be more important than that? So 
Jeff, if you look at and I can't agree with Barack more, just let's talk about Nairobi. Mm. In the next five years, what is going to be precious in this city is potable water. Mm -hmm. And that is Nairobi and other urban areas. And throughout the country, if you go look at many areas of Nairobi, everybody is now sinking boreholes. Yeah. And we see one of the most uh, annoying things is when the government was denying that there is drought in, in Trukana. And, and it's obvious yeah. that there is. We can see images. People have gone there. One of the things that one thought that devolution would do is that we would have advanced warning systems, yeah. that the administration in Trukana, because it is nearer, it's executive, it has resources, is capable of warning the center mm. that what we see is danger. But here we are, most governors, as has been admitted by their chair, are spending their time in Nairobi. Mm. And they are governing by remote control, yeah. so they claim. Mm. And therefore, they are allowing things to deteriorate. I've just watched the minister in charge of uh, devolution saying that if we have the lanes are delayed for a further three weeks, then we are in trouble. Mm. But we are not talking about it with the seriousness that it deserves. And, and when, when I watch some of these individuals talking, I look at their demeanor. Sometimes they are not touched in their hearts. Yeah. No, it is just a press conference, just another press conference. I don't see people touched There's no that there are people dying. I don't see people touched that people are suffering. Yeah. I see a matter of factly press conference that is meant to demonstrate that we are thinking or working about it. And we are saying that we must redefine leadership going forward. Mm -hmm. And the redefinition of leadership means, therefore, that the electorate must also be recalibrated and re-energized differently. But there is a question somebody is asking. Oh, yeah? Here, oh, okay. Let's which, go to the tweets. Monica, should we go to the tweets? PLO has seen this question by Sir Nixon Dugire in Kindaruma. He says, gentlemen, what do you think could happen should D.P. Ruto decide to go quiet in 2022 politics, his critics, etc., and just work. Ha! I keep saying, Jeff, about that kind of uh, question that uh, I flatter myself with the belief that I'm a scholar. <laughs> you are a scholar. And in scholarship, we don't answer hypothetical questions. Uh -huh. <laughs> we test hypotheses. <laughs> we float hypotheses, yes. and then we test them and we see whether they are valid or not. How do I test that hypothesis? Mm -hmm. Personally, I'm not a Jewish prophet. I do not have the power of prophecy. But what I know is that when you are just one year after election, yes. you ought to concentrate on filling you, fulfilling your mandate so that you don't come out of an election and barely one year after you have received your mandate and three years in advance of the next election, you begin to talk about it. My view is Kenya ought to focus on vision 2030 and deal with the issues that are going to change the quality of people's lives. And that is why I can't agree more with my good friend Barack Okwara Muluka that the president must call his house to order mm. and say that there is business to be done here. All hands on deck. Mm. All hands on deck on devolution. All hands on deck on health. All hands on deck on environment. All hands on deck on the future of the country. We are going to talk about elections when the time has come in the year 2022. Look at what the Malawian told you. The yes. Malawian was asking, you guys mm. have elections coming? But, but, but if you are an investor, would you invest in a country where they are beginning to talk about uh, war, blood, and, and, and other things? Mm. Would you? Never. You would go to the next country. Yeah. Because these fellows are busy doing other things. So but, we talk about investment, yeah. but the environment is being poisoned. By the way, PLO, you once mm. told me the politician thinks about the next election. Absolutely. And the leaders about the next generation. Enough said. As for me, I only see politicians in my country. <laughs> <laughs> Zakayo Phillips says, the war on corruption cannot 
and shall not be won through litigation. Politics is the ultimate solution since those mandated to fight it are brought into those respective offices by political power brokers. I can't agree with Zakayo more. And mm. that is why when you look at the whole idea of fighting corruption, the, it is a three-pronged approach. Number one, you educate the people yeah. so that the people know and hate corruption. Number two, you prevent corruption. So prosecution and punishment is only a minor component of it. I can't agree more. Wherever there is political will, one sees that corruption reduces dramatically. And we need not go far. The president is right now in Mauritius. Mm -hmm. During the administration of President Sasiwo Sagur Ramgulam, they reduced corruption because the political leadership was clear and they reduced it and the economy grew. In Tanzania, you can see that the resolve and the resolute approach of President John Pombe Magufuli is bringing dividends. You go to Rwanda with Paul Kagame, the same thing. What one wants to say, therefore, is that the real game changer is politics and the from will. the highest and, and the will and, and the, sustained the, the political politics, will the yeah. politics do not just remain with the political class Absolutely. with the president it also percolates downwards to the people yeah. there's such a thing as stigma we must be able as a people to stigmatize those uh, who flaunt uh, their ill-gotten their stolen wealth yeah. We must be able to say you will not be welcome into our space. But if you find that these people are going to church and they are being uh, re received by the church and the, 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 the holy priest is uh, with supported hands. shaking him with a supported <laughs> hand <Yes. laughs> and reserving the most uh, uh, precious place for the thief to sit and cutting short the program mm. so that this person can address them and uh, give his uh, uh, contribution. And this question was raised and uh, when uh, we as ANC we raised this question mm. about people who are turning up in churches with the uh, millions of shillings and uh, the holy men and women of God said uh, you are out of line that we really don't care where this stuff is, oh, really? is, is, is coming oh, really? from. When you have that altar being uh, uh, treated in that kind of uh, sacrilegious uh, manner and a bishop told me that there's no money that he cannot cleanse regardless of where <laughs> God, it has That's come from. Desecration. Absolutely. So Complete we, desecration. We, we, we must get to that. Coleman from Eldora says, the real enemies of the people are our legislators. They have become cheerleaders instead of performing their oversight mandate. Real tumbocrats. How low can these leaders go? You know, uh, there is merit in what Coleman says. I look back with nostalgia to the days when issues of national importance were debated in parliament robustly. Mm. Today, the country does not debate drought. The country does not debate issues of health. The country does not debate issues of crime. The country does not look at the critical issues, the critical mass of our legislators looks to the leader. And once the leader has spoken in or out of parliament, and these leaders have a penchant for talking at funerals mm. and saying at funerals what ought to be said at weddings and at weddings what ought to be said at funerals. <laughs> they have no sense of occasion. Yeah. That is where national policies are articulated in our country. Tragedy. And you know what? They do this at funerals because that's where they get a free audience. Free I audience. Look, I look forward to the day when the mourners will chase them away from those funerals. <laughs> <laughs> Veronica from Wasingisha says, Jeff, enough talk. Kenyans must now stand up, march, march to Freedom Square, and take the bull by its horns. Woo! These bulls have no horns. We must take them by the neck. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some tweets in. 
Sironke, or Sironke, he says, ask Barack Maluka if this war on corruption is taking the right path. Are we heading to the blues with this fight? So far, as I have said, I've just seen drama. I need to see some people who have been appointed by the national CEO being removed. He cannot tell Kenyans that there's due process here. And when the courts say that there's due process, he tells the judiciary that uh, you are the ones frustrating the war against corruption. He must be the one to begin doing something. President Harry Truman had a plaque on his door, the Oval Office, mm -hmm. which read, the back stops here. That's right. President Kenyatta needs one like that. And he needs to fire these people. I don't know what really holds him, what makes my president to behave like he has been taken hostage. Because this is a president who is serving a last term. I have a feeling sometimes that uh, these, uh, there are some people who are hibernating in his government and they are holding him hostage. Yeah. It could be true. You're absolutely right. Green Shop EAR1 says, what do you think of the rampant disregard for court orders in the country? Impunity. Like pure impunity. Yeah. And, and this is where I think that the courts must now begin to bear their fangs. Mm. That if there is any individual in government who does not obey a court order, that individual ought to be sent to jail. You know, the beauty of judiciaries in other parts of the world is that they speak through their judgments yeah. and they speak loudly and clearly. And if that is done, then it will send a clear message that if you don't obey court orders, because you can ignore, the, the legislature can make mistakes, the executive can make mistakes, the only refuge that we have is the judiciary. When the judiciary is weakened, then we are in danger. Mm. And I look forward to the day that that will happen. One more tweet here from Fred Jausenge. He says, as a voter of Siaya County, I would request Professor PLO to run for Siaya gubernatorial position come 2022. I know him so well and he can deliver. We need a savior in Siaya. And he, can... he comes from my village. But the... <laughs> so that is perhaps the only reason. But the owners of Siaya may not like me. <laughs> Gentlemen, Patrick Njiru says a big hello to you guys. Hello, he's watching hello, you Patrick. from out there and he's loving it, loving it. Silas Jakakimba. This is always a pleasure uh, <laughs> listening to the two gurus. Thank you, sir. Fairly Silas. deep yeah. on issues they believe in. And of course, the Rosungo. Wasalimia Kabisa. Asante Zana Silas. Gentlemen, you know, we can have this conversation over and over again, but you know what? And we all, I always said this we, keep ha we have to keep hammering this issue home time and time again without getting tired. And eventually, we hope it will get home. Absolutely. So let's get some closing thoughts. Barack, I'll start with you. We have got uh, an opportunity here, for President uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, to start moving this country forward. When he was sworn in on the 28th of uh, November 2017, He renewed a contract, a covenant that he had entered into with the Kenyans in April 2013. At the moment of entering that covenant, he was given the instruments of state. Nobody else was given those instruments. His deputy was sworn in with him or after him. But he was not given those instruments. The president was given the constitution. He was given the sword of the commander in chief of the defense forces. And we don't hear anywhere the deputy president being referred to as deputy president and the deputy commander of the defense forces of the Republic of Kenya. If President Kenyatta wants to be remembered for anything in this country. 
he should focus on ending the impunity that informs corruption in this country. And as he said recently when he was in Namibia, it should not matter who is in the way and he will have Kenyans around him. And secondly, and last, he needs a proper, focused, and clear youth agenda. Youth agenda that defines itself around sustainable creation of wealth and sustainable job opportunities. If that is not happening, this country is going to be a tragedy within the next 10 years. Mm. It can be avoided. Spiro you get the last word. I believe that we are in a country with great potential and prospect. President Kenyatta is in a unique historical position. He is serving his last term. And I hold the view that he can hand over the Baton family to a new crop of leaders when a number of things have been sanitized. We need to de-ethnicize our politics. We need to reduce the cost of our governance. And if we are going to have a referendum, let it be a referendum on real issues. We need to reduce the number of counties. We cannot afford this bloated government. We need to reduce expenditure. We need to focus on the things that will ensure that young men and women have opportunity to invent and innovate. We ought to improve the quality of governance and the quality of the lives of the people of Kenya so that we are not merely satisfied with our gross national product and per capita income, but we must now do what the Bhutanese do by looking at gross national happiness. And when I talk happiness, it is not about excitement. And to other political leaders, elections are three years away. Save us from this pain. And to the media, the print media, please, there are things happening in Kenya. It is not just about Raila Odinga and William Samuel Ruto. Give us headlines that speak to other issues for the sake of this country. In other words, give us a break. Absolutely. Indeed. Gentlemen, always a pleasure and an honor. Thank you so much for Thank you. coming. Thank you. I've been struggling getting both of you back on, but um, <laughs> I hope now this will be a regular. The, the, the shoes. It's yeah. the shoes, okay. The shoes. Yeah, the I will wear the shoes. Give us the Absolutely. shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. By the way, if you're keeping track of the Manchester United-Barcelona game, it's still 1-0 in the 70th minute to Barcelona. <laughs> you, <guys, laughs> you, you don't see it. We are not moved, no shake. No, at all. <laughs> all right, folks. Remember, if it's Wednesday, it's those three letters on the keyboard that follow each other, namely J-K-L, right here at Citizen Television. I'll see you in a few hours. Right here on uh, Hot 96 with Professor Hamo on the hottest breakfast show in all of Africa. Hashtag Jeff and Hamo on Hot from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Meantime, keep tweeting at Koinangi Jeff at Citizen TV Kenya. The hashtag is JK Live. Your opinion, your thoughts, always. This conversation that we have with gentlemen like this, very, very important, which, whatever the outcome. Thanks again. Good night. Good luck. Thank you. And God bless this Santa great Santa country Santa of ours. Indeed. Santa Sana. Gentlemen. Santa. <laughs>